Welcome to the Betting Pros PGA Podcast. I'm Pat Fitzmorris, joined as always by Mr. Bo McBrayer. The PGA Tour heads north of the border this week. We are going to preview the RBC Canadian Open. From a betting perspective, we'll also do a very quick recap of the Charles Schwab Challenge. And at the end of the show, we will give you our one and done picks for the week. The Betting Pros PGA Podcast is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the place to go for fantasy football best ball contests, but you might not have known that Underdog has golf contests too. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find Underdog in the App Store. And don't forget to register with the promo code BPGOLF to claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. More on Underdog and its golf contest a little bit later. Before we get to the recap of the Charles Schwab Challenge, the golf world was shaken by the news that Grayson Murray had taken his own life on Saturday. He was in the field at the Charles Schwab, but withdrew after Friday, uh, during his Friday round, citing illness. Then came the shocking news at the start of Saturday's telecast that Murray had died. Murray won the Sony Open back in January, the second PGA Tour win of his career. Um, Murray had publicly acknowledged his battles with depression and alcoholism. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to deal with those demons in addition to the immense pressure of being a tour pro. Uh, Rest in peace, Grayson Murray. Davis Riley won the Charles Schwab Challenge. It was the first solo win of his career. Riley's only previous tour victory came in last year's Zerk Classic of New Orleans, the two-man team event that he won with Nick Hardy. And Riley won comfortably at Colonial, finishing five shots ahead of Scotty Scheffler and Keegan Bradley. Riley was 14 under par, the lowest winning score at Colonial since Jason Kokrak. Also finished 14 under to win in 2021. We certainly weren't on the Davis Riley uh, bandwagon last week, Bo. And there was really seemingly no reason to be on him. Going into the Charles Schwab, he had missed the cut in uh, half of the 14 events he had played this year and had just one top 25 all season, a tie for 14th at the Houston Open. I think everyone was expecting Scotty Scheffler to take uh, tackle Davis Riley from behind on Sunday. I mean, Scheffler opened the tournament with a two over par 72 on Thursday, then carded a 65 Friday and a 63 on Saturday to get within four shots heading into the final round. But Scotty just couldn't get anything cooking on Sunday. Uh, One over par on the day and didn't make his first birdie until the 13th hole, so he never seriously threatened. Bo, any takeaways from Davis Riley's win at Colonial? Uh, Yeah, tip your cap to that guy. He had his great, great four rounds put together, and that's... Kind of what you can expect every once in a while in the PGA Tour. All of these guys are so good that even a guy who came in 73rd in my model still has a chance to win. His stats didn't tell you that he was going to come that week at that golf course. But all of those guys are capable of putting it together for four rounds like he did. And not just that, but not just put Scotty Scheffler away, but to pretty much just act like he wasn't even there in the same final pairing. That was impressive enough as Scotty was battling his own swing for the first round. And then of course he did his normal gist (laughs) on Friday and Saturday. And then on Sunday, it kind of looked like Scotty was the one uh, putting more pressure on himself than was actually there. Cause in a real, in a realistic situation where you're guessing what's going to happen, Scotty Scheffler is the one that chases down the guy who only has one tandem win in his career. Uh, but those guys have been competing against each other since junior days. Uh, they showed they showed back at the U.S. Junior Amateur when Scotty bested Davis Riley down the down the stretch of that tournament, and it just it just goes to show that you never know who's going to win. And and just to address the Grayson Murray thing, that's just it's so sad because everybody has their own demons. Everybody's going through their own stuff. Some of them completely do it in silence. They try to hide it from everybody, even the ones that love them the most. And Grayson Murray wasn't that he was outward with it. He let everybody know what he went through and he still, he still wasn't enough to calm it down. So, I mean, that's, that just goes to show that uh, there's people out there everywhere you look that are going through their own stuff. So just be nice. Be nice to everybody. Be nice to yourself. 
That's the tough part. Being nice to yourself, giving yourself some grace. Uh, that's the hardest thing in the world to do right now. But uh, that's that's all you can do. take away from that is when somebody like that who's outward with their own troubles uh, succumbs to that illness. That's 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 a tough pill to swallow for the whole golf community and and anybody who's come across somebody who's battling depression. Yeah, well said, Bo. It was a, a tough week for the PGA Tour for sure, and we saw some nice testimonials from some of. Um, you know, so from some of Grace and Murray's friends on the tour, Peter Malnati gave a really nice uh Yeah, he address. played with them the first two days. Yeah, yeah. And um so it was a tough week for sure. We will get to the RBC Canadian Open in just a minute. But first, our friends at Underdog Fantasy are letting you make picks on your favorite golfers all season long. Just pick higher or lower on selected stats for two to five golfers, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single day. You can also make rivals picks, choosing, for example, which of two golfers will shoot a better score in a round. Golf picks can be combined with player stats from other sports, too. Go sign up at Underdog Fantasy with the promo code BPGOLF to claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Let's see if the 2024 RBC Canadian Open can match the excitement of last year's Canadian Open when Nick Taylor rolled in a 72-foot eagle putt to beat Tommy Fleetwood in a playoff and become the first native Canadian to win the Canadian Open in 69 years. Uh, the Canadian Open is returning to the Hamilton Golf and Country Club. It was last played there in 2019 when Rory McIlroy finished 22 under par and basically lapped the field, uh, winning by seven shots. Rory shot a 61 on Sunday. The tournament's only been played in Hamilton three times in the last 20 years. Scott Pierce won there in 2012, finishing 17 under par, and Jim Furyk won in Hamilton in 2006, finishing 14 under par. Um, the Hamilton Golf and Country Club is a par 70, covering 7,084 yards. Despite the low winning scores here, Hamilton isn't a complete pushover. The cut line was minus two in 2019, minus one in 2012. Um, it's not really a bomber's course. In 2019, the top 10 was littered with players who hit a high percentage of fairways during the week, and Rory and Sung Jae Im were the only players in the top 10 who gained strokes in the driving distance category that week. Uh, putting is going to be key. Hamilton's got big undulating greens, bent grass that are going to challenge the pros. And as noted by John Hasselbauer of the Lions, when Rory won in Hamilton in 2019, each of the top six finishers in that event finished in the top seven in strokes gained putting. So I think that's telling. But what do you make of the Hamilton Golf and Country Club and what sort of players do you expect to fare well there? Um, ball strikers. This is a very, it's a great ball strikers course. And yes, you Rory McIlroy is a longer hitter than most of the people at any tournament. And even though the advantage here is not to the bomber, it's to the guy who can put the ball in the fairway. Rory is a great combination of distance and accuracy. That's what we saw at Quail Hollow a few weeks ago. That's what we're probably going to see here where the best the best players are going to hit more fairways. They're going to hit more greens. They're going to be closer to the pin. And that is kind of what goes kind of underneath the stats from 2019 is Rory McIlroy made all sorts of putts, but they're mostly from makeable distances. He didn't really have to do much battling. He was on fire. He like, he went 60, 61 on the final round. Uh, he was making everything. He was sticking it close from everywhere. And if you can get a guy who can find the fairway, put himself within a good putting distance for birdie opportunities, those undulating greens. Yes. You want to have a good putter or at least a hot putter, but it's not going to matter as much as we think it's, it's going to be the great equalizer. It's going to be your tiebreaker of sorts, but I'm looking at ball strikers. I'm looking at guys from T to green who are hot right now, who are playing well, and maybe who have a little bit more chip on the shoulder for this exact event. I'm looking at you loonies. <laughs> We will get to the odds in just a moment, and we'll talk more about Rory in just a moment. But first, if you want a chance to win a free one-year premium Betting Pro subscription, you need to subscribe to the Betting Pro's YouTube channel right now. Comment below in this video, and that's it. We'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel, so make sure to turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes are up and to claim your prize. 
Now for the odds. These are courtesy of DraftKings as of Monday afternoon. Rory McIlroy opens as an overwhelming favorite at plus 360. No surprise there. Tommy Fleetwood is plus 1,600. Sahith Tagala is plus 1,800. Shane Lowry and Cameron Young uh, and Alex Noren are plus 2,200. Corey Connors and Sam Burns plus 2,500. Adam Scott plus 3,000. Keith Mitchell plus 3,500. Maverick McNeely plus 4,000. And at plus 4,500, we've got Aaron Rye, Mackenzie Hughes, Davis Thompson, Tom Kim, and Akshay Batia. Who do you like from this group, Bo? And do you see any value in betting Rory at such short odds, plus 360? In a way, yes, but I'm also going to be kind of giving him the Scotty Scheffler treatment, where if he starts off a little slow, uh, we've know what, we know what he's, he's done at this golf course in the past, so I wouldn't really put him out of reach at any stretch. So where last week it didn't quite pan out, where we got Scotty at 10 to 1 uh, after Thursday's overpower round, uh, he jumped all over that, and Scotty came up just short. Rory, if he shows up and is a little off on Thursday, it's, I'm looking at the same kind of thing, where if he falls to 8 or 10 to 1, then I'm pouncing because Rory is the class of this field and it's a pretty top-heavy field. Uh, other than that, I'm going to skip most of these top guys because I think they're way too short and I really do think that you're going to see a good variety of long shots chase this win. It's not going to be... It, it might be just like last year where Nick Taylor came out of nowhere to win this thing over a guy who was supposed to win Tommy Fleetwood. This is, it's going to be that same kind of thing. I think this course is very fair and it's going to reward the hot guy that gets hot from beginning to end. And I don't necessarily favor anybody at the top, but Corey Connors is where I start 22 to 1, 25 to 1, somewhere in there. Him and Sam Burns are the misprices here. And yes, Corey Connors is a terrible putter, but everywhere else in his game, this guy is nails. Great off the tee. Great, great, great on approach. We're talking one of the best approach players in the world. And his short game has improved this season. His putting is terrible. But I don't put as much stock on that. But I expect him to be closer to the pin than a lot of his contemporaries. Bo McBrayer is finally on Corey Connors. And it's a week where... I First time don't know. for everything, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm normally the big Corey Connors fan. And I'm not feeling it, Bo. I feel like I feel like putting is is going to be too important this week. And granted, Corey Connors is an amazing ball striker. Maybe he just uh, you know shines through so much in that department. The putting doesn't matter as much. But man, I worry about the putting. Um, getting back to Rory for a second at at plus three sixty. Like so, there are only two par fives here. We've got twelve par fours, and only two of the par fours measure more than four sixty. So I feel like there are going to be a lot of wedges into these greens, and uh, I like I just can't take Rory when we know that's sort of the the Achilles' heel in his game, you know the, those wedge approach shots. So um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of out on him, and it's it's been kind of better, <laughs> yeah. a little bit better. Yeah. yeah, it's just the line. The line's yeah. too short. Um, let's see. Since the start of April, Tommy Fleetwood has two top 10 finishes in five events plus another top 15, but he does rank 165th this year in strokes gained approach, Bo, so I can see why you might not want to be in on him. Um, Seems like this course should be a pretty good fit for Sahith Thagala, the great putter, and he ranks 24th. Yeah, and betting on outright on a guy who's never won. (laughs) Uh, True. True. Um, And I know that's also going to be your hang up with uh, Alex Norton. Eight straight top 25s, Bo. Uh, hasn't finished outside the top 25 since the Phoenix Open way back on Super Bowl weekend. But he only has two top 10s during that stretch, a third at the Houston Open and a ninth at the Cognizant yeah. Classic. So, yeah, he's he's not a guy who really uh, has excelled at sealing the deal. Um, what about Shane Lowry, Bo? Sixth at the PGA a couple of weeks ago. Second to Rory at the Hamilton Golf and Country Club back in 2019, albeit a very distant second. Shane Lowry is interesting for me because I really like him, but he's in the kind of same mold as as Corey Connors, where his putting has been the downfall. Uh, he's actually even worse than Corey Connors in this field, putting on the Poana bent blend that we have here. Uh, I am intrigued by 
the fact that we can get good numbers on Lowry because it's like, oh yeah, Lowry's been kind of on this year. We he's he looks good this year, but I'm looking at him next to other guys that maybe have fit this golf course better, and I'm just who is the guy you said right before Lowry? I'm sorry. Um, it wasn't Norin, was it? Uh, Norin, yeah, I have to. Was I have to address Norin. I've been trying to figure out how Norin is always in the top five of my model, no matter what what I run. <laughs> but I found out why he's always at the top of my model, and he's never in the top in other models, like the of people I respect to analyze golf the same as I do. And Norin always burns me because he never finishes higher than what eighteenth. He it seems like he's he's the guy that pops right to the top and fools you with his stat darling uh, self. The stat that, he, that separates Alex Norman and puts him on the back burner is opportunities gained. And in this field, which isn't very strong, Alex Norman is 118th in opportunities gained. And it's a pretty important stat. That's, that's, it kind of separates, okay, if you made the fairway, did it put you in position to make a birdie? If you stuck it close on a hole, did it actually turn into a birdie? Opportunities gained, Alex Norin is a huge weak spot there. That's why he doesn't win anything. He doesn't place, t- place highly in these events despite having good exterior stats. So Alex Norin is out and now he's probably going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about one more guy from this group, since it seems like I'm more concerned about putting this week and you're more concerned about ball striking. Um, so I'm surprised you didn't mention Aaron Rye, who uh, <laughs> he's top 10 in both driving accuracy and stroke scanned approach. And he's playing fairly well re- lately. I mean, he's not not contending for wins but he's, uh, you know, been sniffing around the top of leaderboards lately. I just, uh, he's not a good putter, though. No, he's a terrible putter. And if I, when I drilled it down, he really fell off in the approach metrics when I filtered for shorter golf courses. His mid to long iron approaches are pretty strong. His short iron and wedge approaches are terrible. The, he's he's outside of the top 100 in many, many stats, including bogey avoidance on short courses, birdies gained on short courses, and he's dead last, or almost dead last, 146th in this field in fair in strokes gained on approach on short courses. That's pretty bad. Uh, he's 149th in another very important exterior stat here, which is strokes gained on par threes. Nearly dead last in, on par threes when you got some pretty tough ones on this golf course. It really, it really sticks in my craw there because 135, 145th on the short approach. Uh, yeah, he he fell off my board in a big hurry when I drilled down for shorter golf courses like this one, which is barely over seven thousand yards. Yeah, uh, sounds like I need to take Aaron Rye off my betting card. And uh, <laughs> it's yeah. scary. There's 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 better people here. Yeah, and what you were saying about the par threes, Bo? I think four or three of the four mm-hmm. are two hundred yards or longer. I think one is like two hundred and fifty, and then the fourth, the, the short one is one eighty. So yeah, it's a tough collection of uh, mm-hmm. of par threes. I, I think some of them are too elevated green. So um, that's going to be challenging. And maybe Aaron Rye is not the best guy to take and on those. Is it Aaron Rye at forty to one? I just, I think it's way too short for a guy of his caliber. I'd rather have Adam Scott. I'd rather have Tom Kim around the same Fair. number, even if they're a little shorter. Uh, Tom Kim's been really warming up lately. Adam Scott's always a, always an assassin. He's always the type of guy who's going to be in the mix, especially when the field isn't quite as strong. 15 years ago, he he could pretty much compete anywhere. And in this stage of his career, he he more likely to compete on these types of events where the field is maybe not as strong. Uh, yeah, and that's the next three guys on my card are all long shots, so... <laughs> All right, yeah, let's uh let's at least talk through some of the mid-range options. We have Eric Van Royen at plus 5000, Canadians Taylor Pendrith and Adam Hadwin at plus 5500, Kevin Yu and defending Canadian Open champ Nick Taylor at plus 6000, Daniel Berger's plus 6500, Matt Wallace, Doug Gim, Ben Griffin and Nikolai Ho- Hoygaard are all plus 7000, Mark Hubbard, Ryan Fox, Bo Hostler and Robert McIntyre plus 7500. And at plus 8,000, Torborn Olison, Davis Riley, Eric Cole, and Rio Hisatsuni. How do we nice. feel about some of these mid-range plays? 
I'm not against going back to the well and Nick Taylor because he actually rates out better on this golf course than he did on last year's course. Really? Uh, where he won in dramatic fashion, of course. I really like his setup with this golf course because he's an accuracy-based player. Nick Taylor is one of the best like straight line accuracy off the tee and pretty decent approach player in his own right. He also has a pretty solid short game to boot. I, I don't think Nick Taylor is going to beat himself. And at 65 to one, we can do a lot worse, a lot worse in this group. Uh, a lot of these guys are falling off my board in that range just because they're, they haven't done anything lately or they're very obviously stat darlings where it's just superficial. You're not getting the results out of the stats. Uh, a lot of the long shots popped up to the top, and of course, of course, some of the favorites were there at the top. But uh, that's the one that stands out to me as the defending champ himself. Yeah, um, for anyone hoping for Lightning to strike twice uh, in rapid succession with another Canadian winning the Canadian Open, uh, you know, after There's a sixty-nine-year drought, why not have two in a row? Um, Taylor Pendrith is Canadian. He won the mm-hmm. Byron Nelson earlier this month. I I just don't know if he's good enough tee to green, Bo. Like, that's kind of not no, Penrith's and, game. And a lot of these guys have burned me before, but this is the Canadian Open, and I do think there is merit in playing some of these Canadian golfers. A lot of them are playing really well right now. Um, the next one on my list is just, I think it's on the cusp of mid-range to long shot, and that's uh, Adam Svensson, who completely obliterated me a month or two ago where I was like, Oh yeah, Adam Svensson, Adam Svensson. And he missed the cut and pretty much got dead last. Uh, so Adam Svensson usually dead to me is uh, very, very highly rated in my model this week. And he's been playing better lately. Now I'm sort of interested in a different Canadian, Adam Bo, Mr. Adam Hadwin. Um, he finished mm-hmm. sixth here back in 2019. So he has shown yes. some aptitude at, uh, Hamilton, Statistically, Adam Hadwin has not putted all that well this year. I think he might be outside the top 100, but he is usually one of the best putters in the world. And I I think he's good enough tee to green to contend, um, doing fairly well in, in driving accuracy and I think strokes gained approach this year. So he interests me. Bo, I'm interested in Nikolai Hoygaard just because I think he's too good to be 70 to 1. Like, I, And I know... His only decent finish over the last three months is a 16th at the Masters. He's missed the cut in five of his last eight, but I, I want to bet on the talent. Like, we saw him playing. He was in a much better place early in the season. Um, I just wonder if this could be a, a get-well track for him. And at 70-1, to 1, I'm willing to take a flyer on it. Yeah, music to my ears. It would be a nice change of pace for how badly he's been playing the last few weeks. Uh, Nikolai Hoygaard, extremely talented. Ice, ice cold th- these days. Lately, Maybe this is sure. it. I, I'm, I'm not going to knock your pick because I've been on Hoygaard for two years now, waiting for something to pop other than on the DP World Tour. Uh, let's let's go, Nikolai or Rasmus. Either either one of the Hoygaard brothers is fine for me. Uh, I'm rooting for both. I just, I can't do it this week, but I, I won't, I won't knock you for trying. I hear you. Um, and then two guys, I'll just make quick mention of Robert McIntyre has three top 15s in his last, uh, or is it two top 15s in his last three events? Sorry. And, um, if I'm right about putting being the key here, Bo, we, we should probably at least show a little interest in Eric Cole at 80 to one. Um, Yeah. You that's know, another but, ice, ice cold guy that rates yeah, out well. That that's the only issue. He has not done much of late. What number about two launch? in my model. <laughs> really, number two. Yeah, oh Eric Cole, number two in my model, and it scares me because he's probably going to make the DFS pool. But even at ninety to one, I got to see him play better. He's been playing so badly the last two months. How about long shots? Anyone longer than eighty to one who uh, might be worth a flyer? Going back to Mr. Fly Swatter, Chandler Phillips. Um, he was in the pool last week and finished very highly. And I'm going to go way down deep for this last one. <laughs> Chez Reavy came in third in my model. He's a short course specialist. He doesn't make over half of his cuts any year, but the ones he makes are on short courses where out of nowhere, Chez Reavy comes out there and shoots a first round 64 and you're like, Oh, there's Chaz Reavy. The course must be under 7,200 yards because Pebble otherwise he, he never competes in any of the longer courses or even the average courses. But this is a shorter one. Chaz Reavy, very, very accurate. He has an outstanding short game, outstanding putter. He just can't muscle up 
and he if he misses the fairways he's done like the this guy doesn't get around it out of any trouble and so if he i i'm just gonna throw it out there 350 to one right now ches Reeby's probably gonna show up i'll mention sam Ryder at 130 to one um has not been in great form, admittedly, which is why he has such long odds. But he is in the top 25 in strokes gained approach and the top 50 in uh, strokes gained putting. So he might mm-hmm. have the right combination for this course. Um, at 130 to 1, there's some appeal there for me. Yeah, man, that's that's a good number because Sam Ryder is a really good player. He's just, you know, the, a lot of these guys are going to use this week, like you said, with Hoygaard. Just to get right, get their game back yep. in shape. This is a perfect place to do it. No, it's not an easy golf course, but no, it's also not a, as tough as what they've been dealing with the last few weeks. Some of these guys have just been waiting for this tournament to come up so they can get their get their form back. Yeah. And by the way, I think I glossed over weather earlier. Uh, I, I don't think they're... It, they're expecting a dry week and just moderate wind, so weather should not be a big factor. In, so we're uh, going to get torrential downpours and probably. gusty winds all four days. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. That's what it's been like this whole season. That's true. What do you have on your betting card as of now, Ball? I have Corey Connors and Sam Burns. I have. I, I still haven't decided between Adam Scott and Tom Kim. They both rate out similarly. They're both playing relatively well for their betting number. Around thirty-five to one, I have Svensson at seventy-five to one, Chandler Phillips at one hundred and fifty, and Ches Revi at three hundred and fifty. With top twenty kickers on the last two, I've got Sahith Thagala at plus eighteen hundred, Shane Lowry at plus twenty-two hundred, Adam Hadwin outright at plus five thousand, and top ten at plus five hundred. I'm taking that flyer on Nikolai Hoygaard at seventy-five to one, and also one on Sam Ryder at a hundred and thirty to one. Now, before we get to our one and done picks, if you are playing in a one and done golf pool, or if you're playing in any sort of tiers based majors pool this year, our friends at Pool Genius have a new product that gives you an edge using objective data like betting odds, course performance, and national pick trends. The tool highlights the top value picks that give you an edge, and it can be customized specifically for your pool. If you're doing a one and done pool or a majors pool, let Pool Genius be your secret weapon. And by the way, Pool Genius isn't just for golf pools. You can use it for March Madness pools, NFL survivor pools, and more. For 10% off on the majors tool and for up to 55% off on yearly packages that include all golf, football, and March Madness tools, visit PoolGenius.com slash Fantasy Pros. Again, that is PoolGenius.com slash Fantasy Pros. Now for our one and done picks. Last week at the Charles Schwab, Bo took Tom Kim. He tied for 24th and earned $70,866. I took Jordan Spieth. He tied for 37th and earned $38,675. Bo gains ground, but I'm still ahead by about a million dollars. I'm up first this week. I've already burned a lot of my Canadians, Bo. I've used Corey Connors, Adam Hadwin, Davis Riley. So let's go with the Englishman. At the Canadian Open, I'm going to take Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, you know, I know it's it's not the same course where he fared so well last week and got into the playoff, but I don't know. I, th- I think he's got the decent enough overall game to uh, contend here. Who are you taking? So first off, uh, you, you might have already looked up what is the prize for runner up at the RBC Canadian Open. That's probably what you're <laughs> going to top out at with that pick. Um, and as much as I would love to pick Rory here, since I haven't burned that one yet, if Rory doesn't win here, then I'm losing a big chip in a tournament without an elevated purse. I don't want to burn that chip yet. So I'm going to go with Corey Connors because I don't see any other way I'm going to play him. <laughs> That makes perfect sense, uh, and we had to get at least one Canadian into the one-and-done pool oh, for in sure. the Canadian Open. Uh, and that's going to do it for this week's show. I want to thank our sponsor once again, Underdog Fantasy. Sign up for Underdog with the promo code BPGOLF to claim your special pick and to get a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. And please come join Bo and I again next week when we'll be previewing the Memorial Always one of the best non-majors of the year. Until then, so long, everyone.